Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and we are finishing up Maribel today. So, um, gosh, it's so hard when the project is gigantic, but I have her skirt kind of showing. Let me see if I can move her up a little bit. Okay. So I stitched, you know, hand stitched this right here with embroidery floss, and I wanted to add some some of the like really colorful leaves, but I didn't want to use paper cardstock because I wanted to add the extra details to her dress. So, and I didn't want it to lay flat. Um, so I was experimenting. So I want to show you a couple, I want to show you one method that I'm working with. So um, before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, now's the time to do it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, okay, I assume that you subscribe. Okay, let me move this over. All right, that looks a little bit better. I am using, um, it's called Subly Flock. So it's HTV, it's sublimation flock. So basically this is flock material, which is very, it's the same as this black right here. This is HTV flock. And I love it because it's got this velvet velour-ish feel and look to it. So it just looks, it, it doesn't look like cardstock, you know? I mean, this gives the extra details in her shirt that I wanted. Now, with this subly flock, though, what it does is it, it works like sublimation. So uh, you could print out something on sublimate, you know, using sublimation ink, and you can put it onto the flock, and then you can get the details on here. So that is another thing that um, I'm going to try on a different project. I didn't want to add too much more than what we already have going on right here. Um, but that would be a great way because the other option is when you have so much detail and this would have been a good project to do it, but I was still testing out things. So I didn't, I didn't do it on this one, but you know, in, in the movie, her dress right here has the candle. I think it has everyone's gifts right on her dress and it would have been way too difficult to do in cardstock. Um, and I think it would have looked, um, not the best if we did like sticker paper or like just printed it out, but I think it would have looked really good on sublimation flock. So we would have been able to get that flock material. So, you know, it's got that look and feel and texture of, um, you know, like fabric. And then it would have been, you know, the details, but this is what I've done so far. So I want to show you that today. Um, so basically I cut the flock out um, in the shape of like little leaves. And then I colored, I used Artist Spree sublimation markers to get the bright colors that I wanted. And then now I can put it on her skirt. So let me show you, I wanna walk you step by step through this, okay? So here's my mat. I overcut the sublimation flock so that the leaves are individual leaves, okay? So let's say I'm gonna do this one, okay? And the reason why I left it on here is because you can see the leaves are in different sh uh, different sizes. And so what I did is, it's a little tricky because for sublimation flock, let me pull out the, um, I have it here, sorry. It's, I've got so much stuff. <laughs> when the project is this big, I swear, it's like you need, like a 10 foot table. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I, sorry, let me grab. I can't find the flock, but think of it as a sheet of paper. So on the back side, you have the shiny side down. You still want to cut shiny side down, but you don't mirror because it's taking sublimation. So the sublimation, whatever you put on there is going to be mirrored, but not the actual flock. So the flock, what I did was I overcut here on the leaves. Okay. So this part is the fuzzy part. That's what we're going to put the paper with the ink on, on top. Okay. So what happens is when you pull this off and the way I cut it, I'm gonna pull this off so you can see it. So it's this one. And then I cut the same thing in cardstock so that this piece I can glue down so I can kind of work with it. I cut it in this blue that matches one of her skirt panels. Okay, so it was this one, right? So you can see I'm doing it so that I can match up the sizing really easily. Okay, 
So we've got that. I'm going to move this for now, and we're going to work on this sublimation flock. I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm kind of just, you know, experimenting and building our knowledge, like when it comes to our crafting materials. Um, I know it's probably more than you want to know, but, um, and this one, maybe it's not the best one for this project. I don't know yet. The jury's still out. <laughs> I haven't decided. I did this last night and in my mind, it's been brewing for a couple weeks and it sounds like such a good idea. I don't know if it's going to look as good as I think it does, but all right, so this is how you would do it. This is gonna be our bottom layer, right? So, oh, sorry, let me grab this again. I have already pressed these two, right? And I kind of like it because it gives you a different look and feel than cardstock. And that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm building our knowledge base on all our materials so that when another project comes along where you need something specific or you want something specific, um, then we've got this in our, in our, in our bank of knowledge to pull from. And, and maybe even it still needs an extra step that I haven't thought of. But anyway, so, um, so what happens is this is cardstock. We've got this, the subly flock, and then, um, so with the subly flock, there's still the shiny side, right? That's how we cut shiny side down. This piece, <coughs> oh my God, I'm losing my voice. This piece needs to be peeled off, okay? So I'm gonna peel off the carrier sheet because what's behind, what's touching the carrier sheet is actually the sticky part that needs to be, that is activated when we add heat and that's what's gonna stick to our shirt. That's normally what we would use it for, right? But in this case, it's gonna stick to our cardstock. So this is what I did. And see how it kind of curls up because you know, you're know you pulling it off. So what I did was I took my Teflon, I matched it all up, right? I'm gonna add just a little bit of heat to the stem, okay? Just enough so that it's now attached. It's not completely attached, right? But this way, I know it's lined up. I'm gonna take one of my markers and I'm gonna do the yellow one. So these two are the ones that I pressed yesterday. These we can still press, but I'm gonna do a new one. I'm gonna color the yellow here. And there's so many ways to use the markers. <clears throat> I'm gonna lose my voice. I'm sorry, let me grab it. <laughs> Yeah, this is so ridiculous. Oh, that's why, because I don't, I don't even have a straw yet. Um, okay, you can use a paintbrush, uh, add a little bit of water, you can mix the colors. There's so many things that, you know, it just gives us more, like I said, I'm doing this more to understand like what my limits are really, you know, how far can we push the boundaries? And, you know, if I needed a specific color, I can mix the colors. It, it's all just, you know, um, a learning process and with sublimation you do need a lot of heat and a lot of pressure but because this is on cardstock I'm using my mini so I have my mini on three okay and on the third bar so here's my yellow this is the ink right I'm gonna put it face side down like this um, I'm gonna put my protective sheet also from artist Bree, so that the color doesn't transfer onto my heat press, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna press it, and I'm gonna press it for about 20, 30 seconds for the color to transfer over. And when you touch it, it just, you know, obviously it doesn't feel like paper, uh, cause it's not paper. <laughs> and it just gives you um, a lot of texture and you can play with the colors, like how you color it. It will give you the stroke lines. So it's just, it acts and feels more like fabric than paper would. Um, all right, I'm gonna pull it off and see what we have here. I'm also using this little mat as a silicone mat and that's important because silicone won't absorb the color. I've done sublimation on my regular Cricut press mat, uh, which I use all the time, you know, for shirts and stuff like that, but not for sublimation because I have gotten ink onto that. And again, if you start to add more heat to it and it picks up, it could transfer to your next project. 
<laughs> look at that yellow oh my gosh and you know because I press so hard over here and not much down here and it's really hard to see the actual um, change but there's like a little ombre effect too so it just gives you more like I said more texture so I'm gonna do a bunch of these so now because the heat the heat activated the I'm gonna call it glue right the heat activated the glue so the, the flock um, glued itself to the cardstock the heat transferred the the ink from the paper onto the subly flock. I know it's a lot going on, a lot for just this this little portion, right? So I'm gonna turn off my um, mini right now. I'm gonna bring back Maribel so that you could see how I'm working this. Okay. okay. this over a little bit more and so now we've got three leaves I'm gonna probably do some sort of color thing I like the smaller leaves I love this yellow this yellow is I'm probably gonna do a lot of yellow um, I'm gonna try to stick to the dress so on her skirt what I think I was seeing was like a, a few pinks and then a few turquoise and then a few yellows so I'm gonna kind of keep it in that I, I think I'm gonna bunch up the colors but and I think this leaf is too big so I'm gonna go with the smaller ones we could probably do even smaller and I could trim it by hand but I'm not going to <laughs> I'm gonna keep it like this and I'm gonna follow the stitch line so I hope that was helpful for how to add on extra to make your cardstock project just come to life a little bit more so um, and you do that, I'm gonna give you an overview right now. You do that by like her glasses, okay? So she's not on the foam board yet, so I'm gonna flip it up. You see how her glasses are not flat on her face? Um, it's got three layers of the black. So it's like layers on layers with, I used uh, my hot glue gun because it's really thin, right? So I didn't want to use foam tape and for the white to show through and be distracting. So I used my hot glue gun to put glue on it, not to use as glue, but to let it dry so that it created space for me to add the next layer of black. The pom-pom earrings, I mean, I love these that it moves. I used a perler bead to lift it up right here so that I can wrap the string so that this pom-pom can dangle and then glued, you know, the, the little um, yarn piece up here. The butterfly, again, I'm using the hot glue gun to create that space so that the butterfly isn't flat. It's also yarn, a yarn butterfly. Um, the HTV flock here, it's raised so it gives us that extra like layer and texture <laughs> and the color is way more vibrant. So this black, you can see it's different than the black that is part of the background. Um, all right, moving on, moving down, sorry. Her, um, her name, the stitching, I used, you know, I stitched that there's a tutorial from to, uh, from yesterday that shows you how to stitch that, adding the stitch on here, drawing that pattern, um, and then stitching that. And then today I showed you this. And then there's one more thing to show you, the tassels at the bottom, right? So that was also yesterday's tutorial, but it's just, it makes everything come to life. She's also four feet tall, so I can't wait to finish this just so that my my art room comes back to uh, you know back to normal um, status because this is so crazy everything's so big like look at she's like I had to create this um, this board so that I could shift her around that's how big she is um, so anyway um, I'm gonna finish doing the leaves but you got like the you know the insight to that I and then um, tomorrow's tutorial is the last one on Maribel, which is putting together the foam board. So I'm going to show you how to glue the two together and then cut it and then put her down. So, all right. I hope that was helpful. I'm excited about just kind of learning new ways. It's, this is probably, I don't know if anyone else would use the subleaf flock like we just did, but 
The point is, now we know we can do it. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in a little bit to do the next tutorial. And um, comments, questions, let me know what you wanna see. More, more Encanto, maybe? Um, other characters, all of that good stuff. All right, I will talk to you in a bit. Bye.